Jews in Brooklyn, across the river. And many of them were saying, we're waiting for Moshiach before we come home. And my response to that was, well, maybe he's waiting for you, right? The Jews in Manhattan, living 60, 70, 80 stories up, really weren't affected, one way that's with an A, weren't affected by what was, ha what was coming. And I could see it then with Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Um, the needle has turned. I mean, it, it's past the, the median point right now. And there is no... Look, every diaspora experience that we've had over 2,000 years has always ended the same way. And it wasn't a good way. And this is happening now because anti-Semitism has been mainstreamed. It's acceptable now to be a Jew hater. You can say you're an anti-Semite, but what you're really saying is you hate us for who we are. Fine. Why would you want to stay in an environment like that when now, for the first time in 2,000 years, we have a viable alternative called Israel? This is why when I got off the airplane here at Ben Gurion, the main thing I, I tried to say was that Israel is the future of the Jewish people. And boy, did I get slammed back in New York for that. Okay? <laughs> the bottom line is, what will wake them up? At this point, um, you could have a Kristallnacht in the United States, and it still wouldn't wake them up. They just are totally addicted to this myth that the United States is somehow different from all other countries that we've we've ended up in over the past 2,000 years. We're not a people that put a great deal of emphasis on quantity. We put a great deal of emphasis on quality. Look, how many Jews left Egypt, left Mitzrayim, after the night of darkness? It was a fraction. How many Jews came back from the exile in Babel? It was a fraction. So, I'm, I'm sad to say that I've heard every excuse imaginable why people do not want to leave Galut. And it's Galut. It's a, it's a punishment. And people don't like me using that term. But it's Galut. I, don't, I shouldn't use the word diaspora. It's Galut. It's punishment. So, I guess in conclusion, we will have the best coming out. Slowly but surely. There are 50,000 French families right now. I want you to think about that number. 50,000 families. And that means children that are waiting right now to finish their Aliyah papers to come. That's just from France. England, you can only imagine what's going to happen there. My wife is, is British. And everybody's coming, she's told. Everybody's coming. As far as the United States is concerned, the key thing is it's a push and pull with Aliyah. Even if the floor is burning, they'll tell you there's no job for us. Uh, our children, the educational system in Israel, let's be honest, stinks. Somebody asked me if you had any job you wanted, if, you know, God was great and, you know, I, I got in, what would you want? I'd love a shot at the education ministry. That thing has to be completely re-educated, re I'll put it that way. Because it's, it's an obscenity. I have six girls going through hell. I, I understand what's going on here now. Th that's a real threat to our future. It's the educational system here. So when 500 families from the Midwest, Dati Luumi families, come to me and say, we're ready to make Aliyah. What is their number one requirement apart from housing? I have a construction company on the side. What is the one thing that they want? They want their own schools. Because what they've seen here scares the hell out of them. So it's jobs. It's education. It's housing. It's Aliyah. It's the whole thing. But you go into the Aliyah ministry here. Walk down the hall. They're playing computer games. They're reading the newspapers. They're doing everything but their jobs. These 50,000 
French families have been waiting for four years. Four, yeah, four years to get their paperwork processed. You know, it's like people don't want them here, right? Well, I want them here. You want them here. Who doesn't want them here? It, the whole thing has to change. So for the diaspora, for the Galut to end, it's a push and pull. The push is coming. It's coming now. When my cousins can't wear their Mogan Davids on the streets of Manhattan right now, wake up. Wake up. So the push is there. The pull is a function, again, of housing, education, jobs, a cleaner bureaucracy, right? Yeah. All of these things. And so that's up to us to get a government in place that will put a priority on preparing the ground for the ingathering. In and it is coming. I can only tell you one last thing. I, when Esther died, I didn't know how to memorialize her. So I started a Gan in Tel Aviv. It's a Yishuv, actually, right in the heart of uh, Indian country. And most of the students there, these little kids, are Filoni. So the chairman of our board is um, Kavod Harav. Um, my God, now I forgot. This, this is I'm going to be embarrassed from this. Um, Halevi, out of uh, the chief rabbi of uh, Petah Tikva. And um, I asked one couple. I couldn't look at the lady because she was, I think she wore more clothes on the beach than she did at this event. And the husband was a tech guy with metal all over his face. And I, I asked him, um, why did you send your children here? And they looked at each other, and the husband answered, and he said, our parents never taught us about God, never taught us about why we are here, or where we're going as a people. And we're hoping that our children will teach us. And I turned to Rabbi Micha Halevi, that's it, Micha, and I said, Zet Gula, because he was shaking. And this is going to happen with the um, our brothers and sisters in the Galut. Yep. Most of them will be running for their lives, right? Yep. And that's fine. We have to have an educational system ready for them to explain why you're here, what you're expected to do while you're here, and where we're going. We don't have that right now. We have chaos. I once told an audience of, of teachers here, I wouldn't give a damn if we turned out Jewishly ignorant students from our schools, because they would at least have a chance to be educated at one point. What I'm very angry about is that we're turning out apikosim, kids that I've been lied to about what normative Judaism is. That's the problem. And a lot of the people that are thinking of coming over here know that, and they don't want that. So it's complicated, but again, the push may, may be so great that it will overcome their resistance to coming home. There's no other place to go. No other place. Where are you going to go? Australia? Uh, gas the Jews? Sydney? Is that what you want? So, that's a long answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> um,